Hello, so welcome back uh, to my channel. My name's uh, Daniel Guamani. Welcome back. Uh, in this game, so losses are like buses. This game lost to Jackness from. Uh, if you only be played very well in this game, I think. I think like an underrated player, a sort of improving player. I noticed he was spending a lot of time with uh, uh, one of the GMs who won the previous year, which uh, won a, a tournament the previous year, which was. Solskis, who's also from Lithuania. So I wondered if he was getting coached by Solskis or was just a friend of uh, Solskis. Um, so maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need some GM coaching. Being a GM myself, I need some input from somebody else. But this game was played on New Year's Day and to be honest, I kind of was feeling a bit emotional because there was one moment in the opening I started chasing the game a little bit, I think, and um, I was playing a little bit on tilt. So let's have a look at the game. Uh, it's an interesting game. Obviously not a good result for me. So you play Bishop B5. I've actually uh, done a course, I've done a, a produced a course on this recently for Modern Chess. Please check that out. I uh, put a lot of work into that, but I, I gave it really from the white point of view. So maybe um, playing against it, I don't know why, but I seem to have bad results against this in over the board games recently. Uh, online, I have quite good results, actually. Some guy uh, on Twitter was telling me I have the best results in terms of my rating compared to anyone uh, in this variation. I think that is because a lot of the variations are very similar to Nidoff. And the one book that I studied when I was younger was Winning with a Nidoff by Danny King. I studied that book quite a lot when I was in my teenage years. And I never really knew many openings that well, but that was one opening I, I kind of understood deeply because I studied a lot of the games in that opening. It, and I think if you want to get really good, you need to learn these openings when you're really young. And I wish I'd studied more book, more chess books when I was younger and learned that to the extent that I learned a night off. I probably would have been a much stronger player. However, this particular game did not end well for me. He went C3. So you don't really get positions that are that similar to Nidoff when they go C3. It's more if they go D an early D4 that you get positions that are similar to Nidoff. Structures similar to Nidoff. So if you imagine if White was to play this, then you've got this kind of pawn structure that you see in a Nidoff. So that's my excuse. I didn't really understand the position. And here I was playing too quickly. I knew the main line was a6, but to be honest, I was mainly prepared for other stuff. I wasn't really expecting him to play this. So I went e6. I noticed that actually a lot of people will try and avoid my preparation, probably because they're aware that I prepare quite quite well. So that in itself is kind of a compliment, right? The people generally won't play their main line, so they'll play their second or third line against me. Uh, so there's something maybe I need to be more aware of in future. So it went a4, and I was aware that was a kind of thematic move, and I didn't react very well, and I probably should have just played c4. I mean, this is kind of messy. If I take, it's kind of messy. I'm not sure if I want that. But I think you can get away with c4 and just accept you're going to be slightly worse. And It's not a great position for black, but it's playable. Um, but I went uh, for a, a very risky idea, which I, again, I think I was chasing. I was chasing the loss from the previous round and I hadn't refocused and I was just like, this guy is not that good. He's 2100. Let's just blow him away. Let's just get the game over with quickly. You know, I, I don't want to like spend a lot of time on this game. That was a bad move. He took yeah, it wasn't really my intention to take back the pawn because I realised he could go a5 and attack the pawn. Suddenly it's difficult to defend the pawn. Do you want to play d5 here? The problem with d5 is he's just going to drive my knight back. If I go here, knight d2. Doesn't look great for black. So I, I took here, which is part of my risky repertoire. And then I went knight e5. And he went knight c3. Actually had another interesting uh, option here. Which, where I miscalculated, and this, this is where, again, you know, I think I was probably regretting having this picture of cocktail and weather spoons the night before because my, my brain hadn't recalibrated. And, yeah, bishop c2 is very nasty here. 
just retaining the bishop, so preventing the knight. So now if if if, if black waits or plays a me like bishop e7, clearly, well, firstly, you're going to be a pawn down. Secondly, you're going to be faced with moves like f4, which are clearly going to put black under a lot of pressure, leading to an attack for white. So you can't really play slowly. So my intention was to go queen b6, double attack. Well, what I kind of miss... Uh, evaluate here is that white can play well there's a sequence here i don't know if you can consider so you might look at it my opponent clearly believed me to some extent he shouldn't believe me never believe a gm and he probably thought this is not that great I and mean, we could flip the board as well and just look at it from white's perspective so what should white do here um, there is a very good sequence here. I don't know, you might want to pause the video at this point and think, you know, what should white play here? There's a nasty sequence. It's kind of simple once you see it. It's not really that complicated. Okay, what he can play, for example, is, well, he can play this move first, but what he can play is bishop b3. Now, maybe, um, yeah, I think I'll just misevaluate this whole position. Because bishop e3 is, is very nasty, actually. You don't really have time to take on e4 because there's stuff with knight e6 happening. It's not going to work out well for black at all. Like here, just trade and then take, for example. So what other options do you have? If you go here, then I'm going to go a5. And then I'm going to slot in this move. And you're going to be in big trouble now, I think. You're going to have to move the king. Which is really not what you want to do at all in the, in the opening. Certainly not in a, in a Sicilian defense. Which is a very dangerous variation in general. So, <coughs> this position, very, very dangerous for black. Um, and so the obvious move is queen b4, but now you see this move a5 come in, and big problems. The computer evaluates this position as a big problem for, for black, because bishop a4 is a threat, and it's just a nasty, unpleasant position. So going back to this, but my opponent played a natural move, which wasn't a bad move. He went knight c3. And uh, yeah, this is where I played. Possibly should have just taken on d3 immediately. I went d5. And uh, there was one very, very beautiful idea that White had here, which I didn't see at all during the game. Uh, obviously, I saw that he could play bishop c2 in the previous variation. I was intending queen b6. I didn't see this bishop e3, a5 idea. I didn't see this move at all. Uh, very, very nasty idea. So again, you might want to pause your video here and think, you know, what could White have done? So White really could have won the game uh, even sooner than he did, because uh, this position, I did kind of felt feel like, I, I did feel uncomfortable here, I just felt like, I felt uncomfortable here, because I felt like I'm, I'm attacking in the centre. So you think about, it, I'm attacking in the centre when I've not castled. If I've already played Bishop B7 and castled, then this kind of thing is fairly normal. But given that I'm like a lot of moves away from actually completing my development, opening the center like this is not a good idea. And the move that White could have played, which would have been a spectacular win, was just to take on a6, not obvious at all. And one of the ideas is, if you take with a rook, for example, I'm just going to take here, and now I'm hitting this queen. So I'm hitting this, uh, this knight. Very bad position for black. Uh, the whole position's collapsing. Is that true? I guess I could go there, right? Um, doesn't look good though. What does the computer say here? Yeah, b5 and then knight c6, and it's just like chalk 1 nil sort of thing, you know, or just horrible position for, for black. <laughs> You know, beautiful variations. Hard to see for a human player, I think, all this. You know, it's understandable my opponent did not play this. I think even for GMs, might be struggling to find these kind of lines. Uh, it's inhuman. 
yeah, b5. Now, if you take on e4, rook d1 is very strong. So when the bishop moves, there's going to be some nasty, you know, discovered attack. So you play, um, yeah, you go here, but then the same thing, and it's just crushing. So he could have won the game immediately. Let's just flip the board again. He didn't do that. I was I was lucky he, he took. Yeah, then he went B5, which I thought was a good move. Um, and yeah, I really should have taken on C3 here and just clarified the position. Uh, and it would have probably not been too bad for black, but I was I was a little bit afraid of this, and I thought after this he can play me like queen h3. And I didn't really see a great follow-up, and I thought his intention is just to go bishop a3. So how bad is this for black? If we check the engine, so if I go here and he goes here, yeah, you trade and then you castle. And it's not too bad, actually, because that bishop on b7 is a decent piece. You're a pawn down, but the engine just says it's not really enough. It's not enough for white to really claim a big edge. Very tiny edge. So that was a much better option than what I did. Because what I did was kind of, again, like too optimistic. Knight b4, I didn't. When, it, when he was thinking, I was very concerned about queen e3, actually. And I thought this position is not good for white uh, for black. Again, what does the engine say here? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, because after somehow he's going to set up a rook d one. So knight b four was way too optimistic. Uh, I'd lost objectivity by by this point. And he took a knight b five. That was a decent move. Now wait, Queen B8. Again, probably I should just castle. Yeah, again, like what does the engine say? We keep going back to what the engine says. I mean, let's say he traded, right? Yeah, it's not a great... This is what I was kind of thinking in the game. I was thinking, well, I'm a pawn down against a low-rated player in an end game, Slightly worse position. Do I really want that, right? I mean, maybe I could outplay him. Um... Oh, actually, there's an interesting move. You go here now, which I kind of did in the game. But the idea is now f3 is not going to work because of knight c2. So he's going to have to weaken his light squares, which does give me some hope. It's true. Gives me some practical hope. And in a way, you've got kind of Benko compensation because these pawns, although they're great, it's difficult for them to be pushed. So, yeah, interesting idea. And again, these variations I didn't really consider very deeply in the game. I went queen b8, which wasn't a great move, I don't think. I was worried about rook d1 here, but he went queen e2, which was actually a pretty decent move. I thought about playing e5 immediately, but I ended up playing, probably would have transposed anyway. And we got this. Again, I felt like, yeah, this is not too bad, actually. Um, you know, I didn't like my position a great deal, but I just felt like it wasn't terrible because I've got a bit of action for the, for, the, for the pawn. You know, I've got the bishop pair, which is very significant. I've got the knight, which is jumping in potentially to d3 or c2 if he's not careful. He moves the queen away. Um, the only issue is how do I get the queen back into play? Because if I play a move like queen c8, maybe that's running to rook c1. In fact, this is where I expected him to play rook c1. Essentially based on that idea that I can't play queen c8 because it's going to run into knight d5 with tempo. Um, but he went rook d1. Uh, no, he went king h1 actually, which, yeah, wasn't a terrible move. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an understandable practical move because you, you're worried about this bishop on this diagonal. So you're worried about the rook on the, on the g file, really. So that's why he went king h1. But then it kind of puts the, the king on the same diagonal as the bishop. So it has that slight drawback. Um, but it's not a bad move at all. And um, I went queen c8. 
And this is where he went rugby one. And this was like the key moment of the game, I think. The, 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 really the key moment. And where I went like horribly wrong. And I think, again, you know, I keep using this excuse. But I think if I'd more warmed up, I would have played the best move here. Because my next move is just horrible. And it, I, I remember feeling uncomfortable in the game. I remember thinking, I really don't know what to play. And I really was unsure what to do. But the more, okay, I'll show you the move I played. I went, again, pause your computer here, try to think what black should play. It's a very important middle game position. Very sharp position. I've got some play for the pawn. Objectively, white might well be better. But I've got some chances, some practical chances. Um, it's not a great position, but it's it's tricky. But what is the best move? You know, this is a very typical situation you get in, in chess. And I, I think I made quite a serious error here. Um, so what I, I, I play is I play the move h5. Now, why is that a bad move? I think it's a bad move because it's a bit slow. But my idea was to go h4, h3 and soften him up. But clearly, I realized in the game that when I went h4, he's going to go h3. But I kind of convinced myself, uh, when he goes h3, uh, maybe there's ideas like rook g3 and take, and you might be able to get some hustle going, you know, there's some weirdness in the position. You know, but none of that ever really works. You know, I was kind of, you know, a bit delusional. What I should have played was f5. And when I looked at this later, I thought, oh, f5. Why the hell didn't I play this? Because I actually consider playing this move in the game. And the idea is to play e4. And once you get e4, so if imagine if it was black smooth, if white just passed, I don't know, some move like, I don't know, rook b1 or something. You go e4. Okay, there's two things out, uh, happening here. Firstly, you're either going to open up this di diagonal for the bishop. So you're either going to take on f3. Okay, and then the bishop is going to be, uh, the diagonal is going to be open. Or, after f4, black is suddenly getting knight d3, which changes the position quite a lot, because this knight is suddenly a very powerful piece. Now, there is a possibility he could leave the rook on d1 and sack, sack for the knight. Obviously, he wouldn't play rook b1, obviously. Uh, sack the rook for knight, but then that would open up the bishop and the rook. So, <coughs> when you've got your pieces in kind of awkward squares like this, you've got to somehow make them work. And I didn't do that in the game. I didn't make these pieces work. It, you know, it would have been difficult. But I had a slight chance to make them work. And I had to play, I had to find F5. And I think if I was more warmed up, if I played a tournament before this, I probably would have found F5, you know. I probably would have made it difficult for my opponent. This is a problem that I had the whole tournament. I wasn't making it tough for my opponent. So I didn't play F5. And... Uh, Okay, so what does what white do after the move f5? Yeah, it's it's actually not that obvious. Um, apparently, bishop g1, you just go e4 anyway. And there's lines like this. You take, take, rook takes, bishop takes, knight e4. So what's the best move here? Again, tricky situation. You play a slow move, they might consolidate with knight c3. And they are two pawns up now, right? But the computer says queen g4 is very strong and black is equal. The game is equal. I don't, I'm not sure why, again, you know, these are computer variations. But apparently this is okay for black. Very interesting position. You know, for example, if they were to take and go knight g3. Well, you've got stuff you can do. You could, for example, maybe you could consider knight d5 for knight f4 h5 is coming to question. I mean, this can actually end up being very good for black. So I'm not even sure that was the best sequence for white. It probably had better options. But, you know, even though I'm two pawns down, you look at all my pieces, they're standing well. The knight on b4 is standing well. The bishop on b7, rook on g4 is very active. You know, the material here is not felt. But in the game, I never managed to get that level of activity. So apparently the best move after f5 is play the move bishop f4. With all due respect to my opponent, I'm not convinced he would have found bishop f4. I don't think it's an obvious move. Um, maybe he would have found it. He probably would say to me, look, that was the first move I looked at after f5. 
But again, you know, it's very, very possible that your opponent is not going to find bishop f4. That's apparently the only move that gives white a clear edge. So what does it say after bishop f4? Do I play something like rook e6 or what do I play? Yeah, rook e6. And then you don't take. Well, you can take, actually. Apparently you go back is even better. Yeah, so white's still clearly better, but you're forcing your opponent to find difficult moves like bishop f4. In the game, I didn't really force him to find any difficult moves because it was kind of too easy for White. Because I went h5, and he went back, which is a pretty decent move. <coughs> and then he went h3, and now I kind of realise actually the position is not very good at all. Um, because I've got no threats. I should probably just wait here. Just make sure I don't lose e5 pawn. From a practical perspective, maybe I should play a move like f6. Again, what does your computer say? It doesn't like my position. f6 is no good, right? Knight d6. Yeah, so rook e6. Yeah, just accept. Sometimes you just have to accept you've gone wrong. Position's not great, but you start again. You start again and you just accept. But what I did in the game, I kind of tilted. I went. Queen e6, that was a bad move. He went knight e7, excellent move. And again, tilted queen b3, bad move. We're just full of bad calculations. And the problem was, I realized if I take. Okay, I'm threatening May. This was what well, I'd intended, but the problem is, the more I looked at the position, the more I didn't like rook f2, queen b3, queen takes. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you take here first. No, you can't take here. What am I talking about? Yeah, you go here. You can't take on c3 because it'll just take. And then you take, but then the more I looked at this, the more I thought this is not good. You can play me like rook d8, for example. This is what I missed earlier, rook d8. You're going to lose this pawn. It's not a good position. What's con Yeah, it's just a winning line for white. So... I, I realized I couldn't play. That was my original intention. So I realized that, you know, so I'm, I'm going to other variations, which I didn't like. And probably again here, I should probably just wait. But the problem is he's, he's now starting to consolidate with knight d5. And I, I sort of sense my energy dipping. I went here. So my main hope was it, he could maybe go into weird variations like rook b1. Then you take take and then you're threatening knight g3 but he didn't allow any of that he simply took on d5 and now i was expecting rook d4 and i thought he's two pawns up and he's threatening to win a third pawn with rook d4 it's getting to the res resignation stage the problem is like this is why i was saying like f5 and e4 was so important look at that bishop it's just completely dead in the game it's got no future it's like that film Kill Bill 2 when she says, you know, when she has that fight with, is it Ellie or something? It's like the uh, Kill Bill. What was the name of the character? In um, Maybe somebody can put it below. The Uma Firma character, the, the bride. Um, and she was fighting um, Daryl Hannah. And at some point, they, she starts talk, they start talking during the middle of the fight. And she goes, bitch, you've got no future. And then the next thing, she's sort of, well, I, I, they're kind of giving away the film a little bit. But yeah, watch the film. It's a good fi film. Kill Bill 2. Well, Kill Bill 1, of course, is also a very good film. Bit scary, though, right? Anyway, uh, my opponent played a move, which not the most efficient, but good enough. Queen D2. And yeah, it was a fairly depressing end to the game to me because I, I just realized, yeah, probably are better ways to play here, but it's all pre pretty hopeless because I'm just two pawns down. You know, and and he's got a much more safe king. So I was trying to make variations here work, but nothing worked. You know, I was trying to make stuff with queen a6. Actually, if you go back and move, I was thinking about at some point playing queen a6 with the idea of bishop f1 that's how desperate i was getting but none of that really worked i remember maybe even here i was thinking about something weird but yeah i was i was really in desperation mode and yeah he he mopped up fairly efficiently but i think the problem is here pretty much every move wins once you've reached this position it's just too easy for white 
He played a good move there, Queen C2. Threatening to invade, so not only are my two pawns down, but he's also threatening to attack. I went f5, which is really a move you never want to play here because that just. The only good thing about my position is the bishop is blunted by the pawn on f6. Once I get f5, that bishop becomes a monster. So it's more or less. I felt like resigning here. He went queen d2. He went rook e1, again a good move, so he's threatening uh, rook here. Oh, yeah, there was some variation like. I can't actually remember the game, but there was some weirdness with rook e2 or bishop e2 or something, but none of it works. Like, basically, nothing works here for, for black. And I went rook a8. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, this was it. Yeah, if I go here, for example, rook a2 trying to become active, uh, he can simply play. Queen B8 check, I think. Yeah, so that was what I missed earlier. He goes Queen B8. Well, you're not really going to survive with your king on F7. There's probably a million ways to win here. But the simplest, I thought, was just Rook H8. Um, although now I'm thinking about it, I can, I suppose I can play this out of pure desperation. But you really, uh, but yeah, I might as well have done this because at least this way you go down in flames. Whereas in the game, I kind of just lost in a very limp way, right? But you will get mated here. The problem is they go check. And then when you go here, well, actually it's checkmate in one. Yeah, so I probably should have just done that and just followed my sword, but... Um, Obviously, there's other ways for white to win as well, right? Which would be very surprising if there weren't. But rook, e2, rook a2 didn't work. So after that move, I was forced to play a very passive move. When you're down two pawns and you're trying to create counterplay, the last thing you want to do is play passive moves like bishop e6. But I thought he's also threatening bishop g7 now to add to my troubles, and then queen will come across. So I played that move, and he went rook h5. And at this point, I decided, look, I was fairly really depressed. Really down about the game. I could have fought on a little bit, but it's plus four or plus five. And I realise it's just completely hopeless in the long run. And also, sometimes you can pick up... your My opponent's body language was really super confident. He didn't look nervous at all. And I just felt like this is such a depressing position to play. I didn't really want to look at it anymore. So I decided just to resign the game at this point. I possibly could have played on, but... He's plus two pawns. And a very simple plan. He's going to go rook g5, exchange rooks. And then going to have a problem defending g7. And then he can slowly advance. h4, h5, for example, is one possible plan. And it's a very simple win for white. So the game was essentially decided by this point. I decided not to play on. Um, so yeah, depressing result. And uh, clearly, I think there's something that needs fixing in my game where I need to maybe play more, like uh, rather than have these long months of in when I play, don't play for a long time. We clearly see in these games, I'm not playing well enough. I don't want to make excuses, but I do feel like these games were not at the quality that I would normally show. So there was something very clearly wrong. Anyway, that was the game against Jukeness. Uh, well played to him. He had a good tournament. He finished on five and a half. It was a pretty good event. Finished on plus two in quite a strong field. Clearly an underrated player, so interesting to see what he does in the future.